Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. What is it about a good TV show intro that just gets you hyped up? It's almost a dying art. A lot of shows will just show a title card, hell if even that, and be done with it. But with those that know the importance of it, a lot of work is put in. The intro to a show is like a trailer for your product, and years of advertising have made it clear that that's pretty damn essential. From the music, to the visuals, to the explanation of what you're about to see, it has to be the best representation you can put out there. And we're gonna look at the best of them here today. Now there are a few limitations here. First off, I'm only doing American shows. The reason? Well, if we include Japan in there, pfft, they'd all win. I'm also not just going for the catchiest theme, and it has to be more than just some clips thrown together. A lot of it has to be created for the opening. The song, the visuals, and just how much it gets you hyped up to see the show. With that said, let's take a look and see which Eleven incorporated these qualities the most. Why Eleven? Because I like to go one step beyond. So, sit back and enjoy the Top Eleven Best TV Show Intro. Number 11. Johnny Quest, The Real Adventures. A clever little send-up to the 60s cartoon, this 90s reboot did a good job at keeping the retro feel while also updating it with some modern touches. True, it does seem rather simplistic, just flying through a CG backdrop of green lines while images from the show play. But again, it's how uniquely they display them. If it was only clips edited together, it wouldn't be as interesting, but here, flying past them in a seemingly interactive landscape, it suddenly brings everything to life. The music also does great at building up the adrenaline. Just listen to those opening notes. Hell yeah, it's like a mix between Terminator and Batman. It's just the right combination of 90s cheese and... really, kind of 80s cheese. If 80s shows had this kind of technology and music at the time, it probably looked very similar. The only thing that bothers me is unlike Batman where it's revealed what it is you've been flying through during the credits, this one tries to do so too, but... What the hell is it? Was it a virtual reality petri dish? Is it a canyon if Wile E. Coyote was in the Matrix? It just looks like lasered scrambled eggs behind your logo. What does that have to do with anything? Now, oh, well, it's still a pretty cool intro to get you prepared for some really cool adventure. Number 10. Jack of all trades. How did I never hear of this show? This is totally off the wall. In the vein of the enjoyably corny escapades of Hercules and Xena Warrior Princess, this was an adventure series set in the 19th century starring Bruce Campbell as a kind of Zorro slash Scarlet Pimpernel action hero. It's as silly as it sounds, and it doesn't hide it in the least. While this intro does show some clips from the show, its effort in staging a fully choreographed musical number more than makes up for it. Which brought Jack to a lady, both beautiful and smart. It's like something out of a Disney production. Hell, even Disney wouldn't quite go this silly. But that's part of what makes it so unique and bizarre. From the halls of Montezuma to the shires of Tripoli, sail around the bloody world to defend democracy. Look at everybody. They are totally owning how ridiculous this all is. But it looks like they're having such a great time, we kind of get sucked in right along with them. I don't know who thought this up, but you don't see many live-action intros quite like this. Although maybe for good reason, seeing how it only lasted two seasons, but it's still amazingly fun. It's clearly playing by its own rules and cheerfully asking us to join in. Pee-wee's Playhouse. This intro has a little bit of everything. Live action, puppets, stop motion, and of course, our terrifying grandmaster of batshit insanity. What's so funny about this intro is not only how long it is, ranking in at two and a half minutes where most show intros are only about 30 seconds, but the first half is surprisingly laid back. It's almost like a soothing vacation in a fantasy land. 
this of course offsets the rest of the segment, which is loud, fast paced, and totally crazy. Adding to the random madness is the fact that Cindy Lauper is the singer of the song. Yeah, not even kidding. They got Cindy Lauper to do that voice. It makes no fucking sense. But that's also part of what's so fun about it. It's surreal, energized, and will make you question what the hell you drank today. It's crazy fun as only Pee Wee Herman can supply. <laughs> Number 8 Bucky O'Hare This is another show I didn't really see much of growing up, but by god I wish I did! What the hell is all this? I mean, I get the basics, some sort of space bunny stopping evil toads from taking over the universe, justifiably silly enough, but Jesus Christ, look at all this! Bucky! Captain Bucky O'Hare! He goes when no ordinary rabbit would dare! It's like Mad Max, furry road! It's just a rush of violence and fucking crazy imagery! Bucky! Captain Bucky O'Hare! Mutants and aliens and toads beware! Look at how fast it goes, there's no way to keep track of all of it. Hence, you'd have to come back to the show just to see what you missed getting blowed up in the opening. You practically have to pause it, it goes so fast. But the funky fresh rabbit who can take care of you! And I swear to God, that's Chris Rock's voice doing the same. You're looking for adventure, well this is it! With Jenny dead I blinky, and Willie to win, I said Bucky! I wanna sing about a cat who's got bigger teeth than me! It's not even really that long, but when you're done, you feel like you've gone through a war. You feel like you survived one of those tank girl, earthworm, gym, resident evil apocalypses. With a bunny. Which, yeah, we still fit into any of those. Definitely an intro to get whatever color your alien blood is pumping. Bucky! Captain Bucky O'Hare! Bucky! Bucky! Bucky O'Hare! Let's croak us some toes! <laughs> Number 7. X-Men. Aside from the awesome guitar work, there's just something to how grand and huge the imagery is. It really looks like something out of those classic 80s Marvel comics. Flying through space, laser beams everywhere, a strange obsession with the color yellow. It still feels huge. Even the letter X, it's such a cool looking letter. That's why they throw it in the middle of the ocean and have it explode. Because it's the letter X, and X is cool! Seeing their names fly by each character as they display their powers and fight off evildoers, how can you not get excited for this? I should also include the Japanese intro for the show, which is even more amazing. And yeah, I know what you're thinking, wait, I thought you said no Japanese titles. Well, it turns out it was so good that they actually put it at the end of the American end credits. So it counts! Mm. God, how can you not get the chills every time you hear that bell? It's the bell that says, your homework is done, even if it's not. There is only X-Men now. We have that cool letter exploding in the ocean. Your ass is ours. <laughs> Ending with an army of enemies rushing toward an army of heroes with civilians panicking in the middle. How can this not get you jacked up? X-Men is a kick-ass show, now you know! Number six. Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Okay, this might not be as epic in, say, drama or action, but come on, who doesn't know every lyric to this intro and sing along whenever it's mentioned? In West Philadelphia, born and raised on the playground is where I spent most of my days. It's a perfect representation of the show. It's silly, it's over the top, it's kid-friendly, but not insultingly so. It's colorful, it's creative, and it's a complete time capsule to the late 80s and early 90s. She gave me a kiss and then she gave me my ticket. I put my walkman on and said I might as well kick it. But the funny thing is, just like Demolition Man, engulfing it in its time time period surprisingly made it more timeless. It is so in your face and unapologetic in its goofiness that it gives it its own sense of fun that people can laugh and enjoy at any time. You can be a grown adult or a little kid and still get the same amount of joy from this. I pulled up to the house about seven or eight and I yelled to the cabby, yo home, smell you later, looked at my kingdom, I was finally there to sit on my throne as the Prince of Bel Air. One of the few instances of a TV intro being both dated and timeless all at the same time. Now this is a story all about how my life got flipped, turned upside down.
Number five. The Twilight Zone slash The Outer Limits. Not only do both of these shows have similar premises, but they also have the same goal with their intro, to make you feel like you're being teleported. And through very simple means, they pull it off. Who doesn't know those famous four notes from the Twilight Zone? Hell, anytime something weird happens, people still hum those four notes. The effects in the opening have never been that great, but they were so surreal and matched Rod Serling's brilliant writing and narration. Despite how fake it looked, you really felt like you were entering a different realm of reality. Almost like you were being put in a trance. You unlock this door with the key of imagination. You're moving into a land of both shadow and substance, of things and ideas. You've just crossed over into the Twilight Zone. Outer Limits is even more minimal in its approach. All you're looking at most of the time is just a line. But again, the writing and the tone suck you into a different world. Only this time it seems a bit more like a hostage situation. You're under the control of whoever is talking to you on the television set. There is nothing wrong with your television set. We are controlling transmission. For the next hour, sit quietly and we will control all that you see and hear. Imagine seeing this for the first time back then. It would probably catch you a little off your guard. You are about to experience the awe and mystery which reaches from the inner mind to the outer limits. Wow, these are the most eloquent and abstract terrorists I've ever seen. Both knew how to take you into an altered state of being and each one is still remembered years later for doing it so well. It was the perfect tone to an uncomfortable night of dimension jumping. Number four. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah, you knew I had to put this one on there. Only an intro this awesome could get you so pumped for something as crazily titled as Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. The animation here is so good. The shadows, the light particles, the motion, it makes something so silly seem incredibly badass. While not forgetting to include the silly stuff too. He's a radical raptor. A few seasons later they changed up the intro and, while not bad, and you could definitely argue it more adequately fit the silly tone, it wasn't nearly half as good. This just felt like an action thrill ride. It's still hard for me not to go apeshit whenever I hear that opening guitar. Yeah! Oh, sorry. Everybody looks amazing in it, everybody moves amazing in it, and I still don't know how they make that weird high-pitched sound when they say Heroes in a Half Shell. Heroes in a Half Shell, Turtle Power. How do you duplicate that? I don't know if you can. It's just so perfectly bizarre. Heroes in a Half Shell, Turtle Power. The city looks fantastic, the angles are beyond cool, the song is catchy as all royal hell. Even if you're not a turtle fan, nobody can deny the awesomeness of this opening. It's Cowabunga Tasticoso! Man, dude. the best part of any Thundercats episode was always the intro. And don't get me wrong, I'm mostly indifferent to the show, I don't love it, I don't hate it, but even the most diehard fans can tell the difference between the incredible opening animation and the downgraded animation of the rest of the show. It's impossible not to get excited for this, I mean, look at that imagery! Swords, lasers, explosions, people running at the speed of light, monsters staring off into the distance, the fact that Snarf only gets one second of screen time, it does everything right! The song and its guitar work is pure 80s awesomeness. Every time you say thunder, 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 you can't help but get more energized with every breath. Thunder, thunder, thunder. It's a word you can't say three times without getting more excited. Thunder, thunder, thunder! See, you can't do it! Look at how the camera follows them. I mean, yeah, I know there's technically no camera following them, but the way it's animated, it feels like there is. You feel like you're running right along with Chitara. You feel like you're doing flips with Lion Oak. It's a freaking blast. It keeps the energy high and the excitement building. What else can you say but... Thundercats! Oh! Number two. Tales from the Crypt. 
You might think it's weird I'm putting this so high up when really it seems like a glorified house tour, but literally, from the first frame, this intro is dripping with gothic amazingness. Look at the size and scale of it all. Look at the attention to detail. Just feel the atmosphere oozing through every second of film. It doesn't need characters, writing, or even any explanation. It's just a gothic tour with some gothic imagery. The lightning, the cobwebs, the creaking doors, the different colors of shadow. Yeah, there's actually different colors of shadow here, going from blue to brown to orange to red. It surprisingly films the darkness in Technicolor. The music is pitch perfect. Composer Danny Elfman writes a both kind of silly but also kind of creepy theme that carries the bombastic size of any epic ghost story. They do so much by doing nothing but showing a house. Really think about that. Think about how huge, creative, and cryptic they come off simply by showing you this place. It's amazing what they can do with such a simple concept. And of course, it's all building up to our big payoff. Tears <laughs> from the crypt. And then it's nothing but terrible puns from there. It's your old pal, the Big Scarehuna. Well played. Even if you thought the show was hit and miss, the introduction always made you happy you clicked on the channel. It's dark, brooding, and has just the right amount of goofy creep. It's dead on arrival in the best way possible. Tears from the Crypt. And the number one TV show intro is... This intro, what the hell can I say about it? It's just amazing. Every frame could be hung on a wall. Every image is something insane and awesome. And when you run it all together, it's literally and figuratively a roller coaster. No, honestly, they put you on a roller coaster in the open. Look at how much they're throwing at you. It's an onslaught of creativity, both visually and musically. With once again Danny Elfman doing the music. And doesn't it sound fucking great? The show itself was just as strange. Not really super funny, but not really super disappointing either. It's just kind of its own weird thing. It was an excuse to be extremely odd, gross, and bizarre. And the intro perfectly represented that. It so enjoyed how totally off the wall and nuts it was that you wanted to admire its confidence rather than question its motives. The show didn't make a whole lot of sense, but with an opening like this, you didn't care. You just got that this was the kind of oddities this show was constantly gonna give you and enjoy giving you and it made no apologies for it. It's time. It sucks you in on this incredible descent into both a fantasy and a nightmare, both at the same time. <laughs> While the first opening is good and captures the crazy spirit of the show, the second one is where shit really gets off the chain. Just look at this. All they have to do is animate him coming up from the ground, but even that's done to an absolute extreme. Watch it in slow-mo. It's amazing the motion and detail they put into it. And all in such an incredible speed. I won't hold my hands up while watching this at such a rush. <laughs> There's one moment where they even capture free falling. Look at this. I don't know how they do it, but they create the same sensation of going over a hill on a roller coaster that they do going into this tent. I've never seen an opening of a show do that. There's some damn incredible talent at work in this 30 seconds. When it's done, you feel like you have to take a breath. It's just incredible. It's the ultimate, crazy, unbelievably surreal ride any show that wants to get you excited for should have. God bless every batshit crazy moment of it. I'm a nostalgia critic, I remember it so you don't have to.